We are continuing with our blade dynamics, in particular blade flapping dynamics and a pitch. Pitch is really not a dynamics, it's a pilot input. Well, but what happens to the blade? How does the blade respond? How does it flap up and down? Is what we're going to look at. So we're going to look at the moment equilibrium at the flapping hinge. Remember a hinge cannot have any moment. It can only transfer a force, just like in your door. If you rotate your four door, it'll just simply rotate. It will not withstand any moment. So that's what happens in the case of a helicopter rotor blade. So we're going to take a look at what happens for a typical blade. For simplicity's sake, we are going to assume that the hinge is right at the root. So this is for analytical integration purposes. There are some uh, computer programs, MATLAB programs, public domain programs, government software, where the hinge offset would be included, and then the resulting integrations would be done usually numerically. So for example, if you're working in the United States, U.S. Army has developed a program called RCAS, R-C-A-S, that can handle the blade dynamics quite accurately, numerical integration. It will also allow for the blade elastic deformation to be modeled properly. There's a, another program called um, DIMORE, D-Y-M-O-R-E, developed at Georgia Tech originally by Professor Basho. He's now at the University of Maryland. There's also a program called CAMRAD, C-A-M-R-A-D, developed by Wayne Johnson, who wrote the famous aerodynamic the helicopter theory textbook. It's only $25 if you get the old edition, so you may want to get a copy of it. Anyways, so we're going to do analytical integration, so we're going to assume the hinge is right at the root. So the blade is freely allowed to flap up and down. There's no damping, there's no resistance, nothing. Now, we're going to divide the blade into small blade elements of width delta R or dr. So it's a typical element dr, this distance is r. Now that element sees a lift force acting vertically up, which wants the blade to flap up. Okay, so if there's no other force there, this blade will keep on rotating up, you know, without any resistance. But because we are centrically spinning, the centrifugal force is pushing the blade down. So this is trying to keep the, pushing the blade down. Okay. So this force is producing a moment in the opposite direction. Another thing that happens is because this has got a mass, when the mass rapidly accelerates this way, it's going to feel a resistive inertial force in the opposite direction. Just like in an elevator, if an elevator vertically rapidly accelerates, you feel your feet pressing towards the ground. That's the inertial resistive force. So the inertial force is acting down this way. So this will also produce a clockwise rotation. Centrifugal force will want to rotate the blade clockwise moment. Lift will want to produce it in the counterclockwise moment. So all the three moments integrated over the entire blade should sit, go to zero at the hinge. So this is the principle over which we work. So we first start with a typical blade section. It's spinning at a velocity of omega r, but we have to add a free stream velocity. So when the blade is right to the pilot's right at 90 degree azimuth, it's omega r plus v infinity. It's then psi equal to 90 degrees. When the blade is to the pilot's left, it's omega r minus v infinity because psi is 270 degrees. Up here and up here, the V infinity doesn't participate because it's running radially. So it's when psi equal to zero or psi equal to 180, it does not participate. So this is the velocity normal to the blade leading edge that we see. So how about the lift? The lift is one half rho C times the, this is the primary velocity squared. There's also the inflow velocity lowercase v squared, we can add it if you're doing numerically. So in comprehensive programs such as RCAS, DIMOR, CAMRAD, there are also other programs available around the world, you know, universities in China, Japan, Korea, Italy, Germany have developed programs, government labs have programs 
commercial programs are available. So they will add, in addition to this, the induced velocity, lowercase v squared, also in the vertical, di in the vertical di di direction. Uh, they will also be more precise with this. They will call this v infinity times cosine alpha, because that's the edgewise velocity. Then in the normal direction, they will add the v infinity sine alpha in the vertical component. But those components are small. This is the dominating component. So when we do analytical calculation, we only take this component. We neglect this cosine alpha because cosine alpha is roughly one. Whichever alpha we define, tip path plane, shaft plane, or, uh, or um, control, uh, no feathering plane doesn't matter. How about CL? CL is a function of alpha. So in comprehensive programs I mentioned to you, such as uh, CAMRAD, DIMOR, and RCAS, CL will be computed from a table, CL versus alpha table, they will look it up, and they will have various corrections for uh, things like a shock effects, dynamic stall effect, tip loss effect, and empirical correction, and so forth. We will use a very simple CL equal to A times alpha, where A is a lip curve slope, like we used to do in our hover for our analytical integration purposes. So this is the lift force. It's acting vertically this way. The moment arm is the distance from the center to that element. So this is R times cosine of beta. But for small beta, it's simply roughly R. Therefore, the counterclockwise moment due to lift on a small element of width delta r is this quantity. This is the force times the distance. So if you integrate all the way from the hinge, which is assumed to be at the root, the r equal to zero, all the way to the tip, you get this expression. Note that the CL will vary from root to tip because the blade may be twisted. Just as in your homework number two and in your quiz, your CL was changing all over the place. Also, the CL may be azimuthally varying because you're pitching the blade up and down. The blade is flapping up and down. So all kind of things are going on. So this is a function of alpha, but alpha is a function of R and psi. Later on, we're going to talk to you about how to compute the CL, but we just right now, for the time being, we just mention it this way, leave it this way. How about the centrifugal force? Centrifugal force is mass times velocity squared over r. So that small strip of width delta r has got a mass delta m. It's not necessarily uniformly distributed mass because some sections of the blade may be heavier than the other. Perhaps you're using a titanium rod near the root to keep the blade from twisting too much. And you go back to aluminum rod or a composite material near the tip so the mass is changing. Mass times the velocity squared over r, this is a centrifugal force. So the centrifugal force is acting this way. The moment arm about this point is, is the vertical distance from the rotor, from this dotted line. So it's r times sine of beta, which is roughly r times beta, when beta is expressed in radians. It's a small angle of attack assumption. So r times sine of beta is r times beta. So multiply force times the moment arm. This is for the small element integrated from hinge to the tip. Several things are constant. So omega squared is a constant that comes out. Beta is a constant that comes out. So what we are end up integrating is the mass times the distance squared, which is nothing more than the moment of inertia of the blade about the hinge. So this is a material property uh, of the blade. It's known from manufacturer database, or you, you know, if you know how the mass is distributed, one could compute by integrating R squared times dm numerically. However you do, that's the moment of inertia. This is per blade about the flapping hinge axis, okay? So the moment of inertia blade about this point. This is the mass distributed. R, a mass times R squared integrated from root to tip is the moment of inertia. So we have the lift clockwise moment, 
we have the centrifugal force in the opposite, opposite direction, which is I omega squared times beta. Finally, we look at the inertial force. So this is the small segment delta R. So this is the angle beta. So beta is changing with time. So beta has got a beta dot, which is an angular velocity. Then R times beta is the distance motion, like an arc swinging up and down. R times beta dot, d beta dt, is the velocity up and down of this blade. R times beta double dot, which is the second derivative of beta with respect to time, is the linear acceleration of this mass. So linear acceleration times mass produces the inertial force. As we mentioned, if you are flapping upwards, your inertial force will be down this way. Just like when the elevator is moving, accelerating upwards, your feet presses to into the floor of the elevator. On the, when the elevator rapidly drops, you feel weightless. Your lunch comes through your mouth, you know, because the inertial force is operating in the opposite to the acceleration of the body. So here the body is accelerating up this way, this mass. So the inertial force is in the opposite direction. So therefore, this will also produce a clockwise moment. The force is dm times r beta dot. The moment is r times that quantity. So this is r squared beta double dot. So again, if you integrate it, beta double dot is a constant. Beta double dot means the second derivative of beta with respect to time, that's all it is. When you integrate mass times the distance squared, you get our same old moment of inertia. So this is also a clockwise moment. So we gather all the clockwise moments to one side. We gather the counterclockwise moment to the other side. This is the flapping dynamics equation. So in uh, computer programs like RCAS and um, Dymore and the CAMRAD or university course, they may have a ODE integrator, MATLAB integrator, to integrate this numerically, every azimuthally, every time step. You just specify the lift from the or compute the lift, then it does the work for you. So it kind of keeps track of the blade dynamics. Autopilots do that in you know, auto gyros. They have a computer, it's computer trying to estimate it. But for simple analytical problems, we could uh, usually analytically integrate it by assuming some sinusoidal motion for the beta and keeping only to the first harmonics, then we can equate the cosine components to the cosine components on the right side, sine components to the sine components on the right side, DC component, that means things that don't change with time on the left side with things that don't change with time on the right hand side. So this is called a harmonic balancing approach. Okay. Now, this is like a spring mass system. Remember in classical dynamics, you would have studied mx double dot plus k times x equal to zero. It's a spring mass system. It's got a natural frequency of square root of k over m. So this is like a mass. This is like a spring. So this natural frequency is square root of i omega squared divided by i, which is simply omega. So this blade natural frequency is omega up and down. It's got a natural frequency. Therefore, if the forcing function on the right hand side has got a sinusoidal variation with respect to omega, sine of omega t, then you are exciting the system at its natural frequency. This will cause a resonance. So if you didn't have any damping, then uh, you will have an infinite amplitude motion. Fortunately, there's a lot of aerodynamic damping. When you flap the blade up, the wind rushes downwards, reducing the angle of attack, decreasing the lift. When you flap the blade down, the wind seems to rush from bottom to top, producing an upwash, increasing the angle of attack, increasing the lift. So there's a natural aerodynamic damping. So you don't need any mechanical damping at the flapping hinge. You only need mechanical damping in the lead lag hinge because lead lag hinge has got drag forces which are very, very small compared to the lift forces. So this is the flapping dynamics equation that we need to numerically solve or analytically solve 
unintegrated. So we're going to take a look at it a little bit later. So let's pause at this point and continue in the next video.